الثانية يرحمكم الله والثالثة بأعلى أعلى أصواتكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أدعوك كما أمرتني فاستجب لي كما وعدتني إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم يا دائم الفضل على البرية يا باسط اليدين بالعطية يا صاحب المواهب السنية صل على محمد وآله خير الوراسجية واغفر لنا يا ذا العلا في هذه العشية اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء وبقوتك التي قهرت بها كل شيء وخضع لها كل شيء وذل لها كل شيء وبجبروتك التي غلبت بها كل شيء وبعزتك التي لا يقوم لها شيء وبعظمتك التي ملأت كل شيء وبسلطانك الذي على كل شيء وبوجهك الباقي بعض فناء كل شيء وبأسمائك التي ملأت أركان كل شيء وبعلمك الذي أحاط بكل شيء وبنور وجهك الذي أضاء له كل شيء يا نور يا قدوس يا يا نور يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تهتك العصام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تغير النعايا اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تقطع الرجاء اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب اذنبت وكل خطيئه اخطاتها اللهم اني اتقرب اليك بذكرك 
واستشفع بك إلى نفسيك وأسألك بجودك وكرميك أن تدنيني من كربيك وأن توزعني شكرك وأن تلهمني ذكراك اللهم إني أسألك سؤال خاضع متذلل خاشي أن تسامحني وترحمني وتجعلني بقسمك راضيا قانعا وفي جميع الأحوال متواضعا اللهم واسألك سؤال من اشتدت فاقته وأنزل بك عند الشدائد حاجة وعظم فيما عندك رغبة اللهم عظم سلطانك وعلى مكانك وخفي مكروبك وظهر أمرك وغلب قهرك وجرايت كدرتك ولا يمكن الفرار من حكومتك اللهم لا أجد لذنوبي غافرا ولا لقبائحي ساترا ولا لشيء من عملي القبيح بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا إله إلا آيات سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ظلمت نفسي ظلمت وتجرأت بجهلي وسكنت إلى قديم ذكرك لي ومنك علي اللهم مولاي كم من قبيح سترت وكم من فادح من البلاء قلت وكم من عثار وقيت وكم من مكروه دفعت وكم من ثناء جميل لست أهلا له نشرت اللهم عظم بلائي وأفرت بي سوء حالي وقسرت بي أعمالي وقعدت بي خلالي وحبسني عن نفعي بعد آمالي وخداتني الدنيا بغرورها ونفسي بخيانتها ومطال يا سيدي فأسألك بعزتك لا يحجب عنك دعائي سوء عملي وفعالي ولا تفضحني بخفي ما اطلعت علي من سري ولا تعاجلني بالعقوبة على ما عملته في خلواتي من سوء فعلي وإساءتي ودوام تفريطي وجهالتي وكثرة شهواتي وغفلتي وكن اللهم بعزتك لي في كل الأحوال رؤوفا وعلي في جميع الأمور عطوفا إلهي وربي من لي غيرك أسأله كشف ذري والنظر في أمري 
إلهي ومولاي أجريت علي حكما اتبعت في هوى نفسي ولم أحترس في من تزيين عدوي فغرني بما أهوى وأسعده على ذلك القضاء فتجاوزتهم بما جرى علي من ذلك يا بعض حدودك وخالفت بعض أوامرك فلك الحجة علي في جميع ذلك ولا حجة لي فيما جرى علي في قضاءك وألزمني حكمك وبلاءك وقد أتيتك يا إلهي بعض تقسيري وإسرافي على نفسي جميعا معتذرا ودماء منكسرا مستقيلا مستغفرا منيبا مقرا مذعنا معترفا لا أجد مفرا مما كان مني ولا مفسعا أتوجه إليه في أمري غير قبولك عذري وإدخالك إياي في سعة من رحمتك اللهم فاقبل عذري اللهم فاقبل عذري وارحم شدة دري وفكني من شد وثاقي يا رب ارحم ضعف بدني يا رب ارحم ضعف بدني ورقة جلدي ودقة عظمي يا من بدا خلقي وذكري وتربيتي وبري وتغذيتي هبني لابتداء كرميك والسؤال في برك بي يا إلهي والسيدي وربي أتراك معذبي بنارك بعض توحيدك وبعض من طوى عليه قلبي من معرفتك ولهج به لساني من ذكرك واعتقده ضميري من حبك وبعض صدق اعترافي ودعائي خاضعا لربوبيتك هيهات أنت أكرم من أن تضيع من ربيت أو تبعد من أدنيت أو تشرد من آويت أو تسلم إلى البلاء ما كفيته ورحمت وليت شعري يا سيدي وإلهي ومولاي أتسلط النار على وجوهي خرات لعظمتك ساجدا وعلى ألسني نتقت بتوحيدك صادقا إلهي لطالما هذه الوجوه سجدت من خشيتك ولطالما هذه العيون بكت من مخافتك حشا لوجهك الكريم أن تحرقها في النار كيف لا وهي سجدت في ليلة الجمعة أتسلط النار على وجوهي خرات لعظمتك ساجدا 
وعلى السنين نطقت بتوحيدك صادقا وبشكرك مادحا وعلى قلوب اعترفت بإلهيتك محققا وعلى جوارح سعيت إلى أوطان تعبدك طائعا وأشارت باستغفارك مذعنا ما هكذا الظن بي ولا أخبرنا بفضلك عنك يا كريم يا ربي وأنت تعلم ضعفي عن قليل من بلاء الدنيا وعقوباتها وما يجري فيها من المكاره على أهلها على أن ذلك بلاء ومكر قليل مكث يسير بقاء قسير مدة فكيف احتمالي لبلاء الآخرة وجليل وقوع المكاره فيها وهو بلاء تطول مدة ويدوم مقامه ولا يخفف عن أهله لأنه لا يكون إلا عن غضبك وانتقامك وسخطك وهذا ما لا تكون له السماوات والأرض يا سيدي فكيف بي وأنا عبدك يا ضعيف الذليل الحقير المسكين المستكين يا إلهي وربي وسيدي ومولاي لأي الأمور إليك أشكو ولما منها ما أضج وأبكي لأليم العذاب والشدة أم لطول البلاء ومدة فلئن صيرتني للعقوبات مع عدائك وجمعت بيني وبين أهل بلائك وفرقت بيني وبين أحبائك وأوليائك فهبني يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي صبرت على عذابك فكيف أصبر على فراقك وهبني صبرت على حر نارك فكيف أصبر عن النظر إلى كرامتك أم كيف أسكن في النار ورجائي عفوك فبعزتك يا سيدي وإلهي ومولاي أقسم صادقا لن تركتني ناطقا لأضجن إليك بين أهلها ضجيج الآملين ولا أصرخن إليك يا صراخ المستصرخين ولا أبكين عليك يا بكاء الفاقدين ولا أنادينك أين كنت يا ولي المؤمنين يا غاية آمال العارفين يا غياث يا غياث يا غياث يا 
يا حبيب قلوب الصادقين ويا إله العالمين أفترى سبحانك يا إلهي وبحمدك تسمع فيها صوت عبد مسلم سجن فيها بمخالفتك وضاق تعم عذابها وبمعصيتك وحبس بين أطباقها بجرمي وجريرتي وهو يضج إليك يا ضجيج مؤمل لرحمتك ويناديك بلسان أهل توحيدك ويتوسل إليك بربوبيتك يا مولاي فكيف يبقى في العذاب وهو يرجو ما سلف من حلمك أم كيف تؤلمه النابر وهو يأمل فضلك ورحمتك أم كيف يحرقه لهيبها وأنت تسمع صوته وترى مكانه أم كيف يشتمل عليه زفيرها وأنت تعلم ضعفايا أم كيف يتقلقل بين أطباقها وأنت تعلم صدقا أم كيف تسجر زبانيتها وهو يناديك يا ربا أم كيف يرجو فضلك في عدقه منها فتتركه فيها هيهات ما ذلك الظن بك ولا المعروف من فضلك ولا مشمي لما عملت به الموحدين من برك وحسانك فباليقين أقطع لولا ما حكمت به من تعذيب جاحديك وقضيت به من إخلاد معانديك لجعلت النار كلها بردا وسلاما وما كانت لأحد فيها مقره ولا مقاما لكنك تقدست أسماء أقسمت أن تملأها من الكافرين من الجنة والناس أجمعين وأن تخلد فيها المعاندين وأن تجل ثناؤك كلت مبتدئا وتطولت بالإنعام متكرما فمن كان مؤمنا كمن كان فاسقا لا يستمون إلهي وسيدي فأسألك بالقدرة التي قدرتها وبالقضية التي حتمتها وحكمتها وغلبت ما عليه جريتها أن تهب لي في هذه الليلة وفي هذه الساعة جميعا كل جرم أجرمت وكل ذنب أذنبت وكل قبيح أسررت وكل جهل عملت كتمته أو أعلنت أخفيته أو أظهرت وكل سيئة أمرت بإثبات الكرام الكاتبين الذين وكلتهم بحفظ ما يكون مني وجعلتهم شهودا علي مع جوارحي 
وكنت أنت الرقيب علي من ورائه والشاهد لما خفي عنه وبرحمتك يا أخفيت وبفضلك سترت وأن توفر حظي من كل خير تنزله أو إحسان تفضله أو بر تنشره أو رزقي تبسطه أو ذنبي تغفره أو خطئي تستره يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي جميعا يا ربي يا إلهي وسيدي ومولاي ومالك رقي يا من بيده ناصيتي يا عليما بدري ومسكنتي يا خبيرا بفقري وفاقتي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي أسألك بحقك وقدسيك وأعظم صفاتك وأسمائك أن تجعل أوقاتي في الليل والنهار بذكرك معمورا وبخدمتك موصولا وأعمالي عندك مقبولا حتى تكون أعمالي وأرادي كلها وردا واحدا وحالي في خدمتك يا سرمداد يا سيدي يا من عليه معولي يا من إليه شكوت أحوالي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي قو على خدمتك جوارحي واشتد على العزيمة جوانحي وهب لي الجد في خشيتك والدوام في الاتصال بخدمتك حتى أسرع إليك في ميادين السابقين وأسرع إليك في المبادرين واشتاق إلى كربك في المشتاقين وأدنو منك دنو المخلصين وأخافك يا مخافة الموقنين واجتمع في جوارك يا مع المؤمنين اللهم ومن أرادني بسوء فأري اللهم ومن أرادني بسوء فأرد جميعا اللهم ومن أرادني 
قادني بسوء فأريت ومن كادني فكيت واجعل لي من أحسن أبيدك نصيبا عندك وأقربهم منزلة منك وأخصهم زلفة لديك فإنه لا ينال ذلك إلا بفضلك وجد لي بجودك واطف علي بمجدك واحفظني برحمتك واجعل لساني بذكرك لهجاما وقلبي بحبك متيما ومن علي بحسن إجابتك وأقل عثرتي وغفير زلتي فإنك قضيت على عبادك بعبادتك وأمرتهم بدعائك وضمنت لهم الإجابة جميعا فإليك يا ربي نصبت وجهي وإليك يا ربي مددت يدي فبعزتك استجب لي دعائي وبلغني مناي ولا تقطع من فضلك رجائي واكفني شر الجن والإنس من أعدائي يا سريع يا رضا يا سريع يا سريع يا اغفر لمن لا يملك إلا الدعاء فإنك فعال لما تشاء يا من اسمه دواء وذكره شفاء وطاعته مغنيا ارحم من رأس ماله الرجاء وسلاحه البكاء يا سابغ النعام يا دافع النقام يا نور المستوحشين في الظلام يا عالم لا يعلم صل على محمد وآل محمد وافعل بي ما أنت أهلوم ولا تفعل بي ما أنا أهلوم وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته طيبين الطاهرين ولاستجابة الدعاء ولقضاء الحوائج ولقبول الأعمال ولشفاء المرضى إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أموات الحاضرين رحم الله ويقرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مشفوعة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد أحسنت that beautiful recitation أحسنت Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Congratulations on the births of the Akmar of Bani Hashim, the heroes of Karbala, alayhim salam. So inshallah, uh, today we'll have Sheikh Mirza Abbas giving a talk titled From the Ark of Salvation, Hussein alayhi salam, to the Ark of Salvation, Al-Mahdi, Ajallah, Farajah al-Sharif. And the, the topic will continue this Thursday. 
uh, and into next Thursday, inshallah. So please do uh, attend this week and next week for the entire series. Just before we invite the Sheikh up, just a quick uh, reminder, we have the, <coughs> the Mahdi course, which is running this Saturday. Today is the final chance for registration. So please make sure uh, if you intend to sign up that you do so today. Uh, inshallah, on the uh, 3rd of March, Sunday, we have a Ramadan Bazaar and we'll have uh, across the whole entire hall over 20 businesses that will have all their businesses and services displayed on tables and inshallah the proceeds will be uh, to raise funds for the masjid. And I think that is all the announcements I had. So uh, please do consider donating. I've put the link on our uh, LOIF community page. Without your generosity, we can't sustain these programs. So let's uh, welcome the Sheikh with the loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma inqara حبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعليه الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين والعنة الدائمة على أدائهم وغاس بحقوقهم ومنكر فدائلهم ومناقبهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن الحسين مسبع الهدى وسفينة النجاة صدق رسوله كريم وسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Greetings and felicitations upon the birth of Imam Hussain alayhi salam Abu al-Fazl Abbas and Imam Sajjad alayhi salam and all the victorious ones of Karbala to the Imam of our time and to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your presence. We are really thankful to be in such a gathering. And these gatherings are extremely important. Uh, however, we may see a deterioration or um, bit of lack of attendance from our youth, from our community. However, the only way that we have survived uh, time and time again is because of these gatherings. And that's what we find in the teachings of our scholars of Akhlaq. Sayyid Ali Qazi, one of the prominent master in mysticism, uh, he says that weekly gathering of Masaib of Imam Hussain is necessary for a spiritual wayfarer. Even if it be that you have only yourself and maybe your family member. All should, should sit together and do the zikr of the Masaib of Imam Hussain salam. So therefore, the Husseiniyas and the centers that we have, they facilitate that. And they allow us to have this gathering. Our participation perhaps may not be to 
100% sincerity or 100% of tawajjuh and focus towards the whole of Dua'i Kumail or towards the whole of lecture or ziyarat. But that little tawajjuh and focus and our participation itself counts a lot. Just being here counts a lot. These children running and enjoying, having fun counts a lot. And perhaps this enjoyment of theirs itself could be one of the reasons of acceptance of our duas. So therefore, community, brotherhood, sisterhood, being together is far better and more effective than I myself being on my own and supplicating and connecting myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we never know that the person who is sitting next to me and his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the fourth Imam says that Allah have hidden three things in three things. The fourth Imam has his wilada is in these days or today as well. Nice to remember him. Four things are hidden in four things. The acceptance of dua is hidden in dua itself. Don't look at whether the dua be a big dua or a small dua. Because the acceptance of dua is in dua. The azab of Allah is in a sin. Don't look at, oh, this is just a misdemeanor. This is just a small sin. You know, it's not really killing somebody or backbiting or it's just I'm just making fun of a moment or something like that. The azab of Allah is hidden in sin, regardless of that sin be a bigger sin or a small sin. The awliya of Allah, the saints of Allah are hidden among men. You know, awliya, they don't come in packaging. You know, there's no special packaging for awliya or a brand, you know, for awliya. They are hidden amongst men. So therefore, respect each and every person because you don't know which one is a waliullah. So therefore, we are completely unaware of the amount and the type and the intensity of the connection that the brother sitting next to me have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the sister sitting next to me have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this and their connection perhaps could be the reason for me to be blessed, for my du'as to be accepted. So it's very important to be part of community building, part of the brotherhood and sisterhoods that we have. And alhamdulillah, we have the tawfiq, the management, the brothers and sisters, they are working behind the scene to make this possible. For the success of all our Husainiyas, Masajid, and especially the brothers who are working behind the scene for these things to happen, for these gatherings to happen, for their reward for them and their marhumin, recite one loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. There are only two Imams who've been given the title as Safina e Nijat, the Ark of Salvation, among all Imams. Nevertheless, all Imams are Ark of Salvation. But when we look at the Hadith literature, we find that Imam Hussain salam and Imam Mahdi salam is considered to be the Ark of Salvation. In this Hadith which I recited, which is from the Prophet, which says that Inna al-Hussein, you know, certainly Hussein is the torch of guidance and the Ark of Salvation. That sifat or that sort of quality or, you know, uh, that title has been given to the Imam. Now, title giving as well is quite interesting. Uh, name giving, title giving. It's, uh, it's based on the personality of the person peculiarly to those who are closer to nature. If you look at natives, you know, the way they give names to people, or the shamans, for example, or even in other, you know, traditions, we find that, you know, the, the reason for the names to be given is based upon the quality and the personality of the person. The titles of the Masumin salam is based on that as well, right? When you look at that person, oh, he's Kazim.
because he was very, you know, forbearing, the seventh Imam, for instance. Not that, you know, Imam Jawad wasn't forbearing, but his Jawad is the one who is, you know, uh, you know, give, for example, is very generous, for example. All Imams were generous, but Imam Jawad is known to be, you know, for example. Uh, this is because what is reflected from them, based on that, you know, people are wise individuals tend to give that name, right? Uh, that's why we find, you know, among the natives you have, you know, wounded bear, they call it, for example. You know, the dances with wolf, as we have the most famous one that uh, we all know, perhaps. But all of these names is based upon the personality of the person, so that when you call that name, and when that person comes in to a gathering, he says, oh, the wounded bear is here, then they would say that, oh, this man has been hurt. And he lost his family or something may have happened. And this will allow other peoples to treat this person in a different way. Right? Uh, so the same applies, and this is the same tradition that we find among the, the Arabs as well, the nomads, you know, because they were the similar sort of substance as the natives, right? And uh, they also have these all names or titles been given to, you know, to, to the different individuals, right? Uh, positive or negative even, you know? Abu Jahl, for example, you know? Uh, so these are all based upon the personality of that person. Now, when it comes to Safin and Nijat, you have the similar uh, reality to it, right? Why Imam Hussain is known as the Safin and Nijat? And then why the twelfth Imam? Right? Now, when we look at, you know, and also one thing which uh, uh, the title would have become too, too big or too, uh, you know, too much, I didn't include that. Uh, the bridge from one Safin and Nijat to the other Safin and Nijat. Imam Hussain is Safin and Nijat. As we said, from the Safin and Nijat of Imam Hussain to Safin and Nijat of which is Imam Zaman. So what's the link and what's the bridge to come from this Safin and Nijat of Hussein and enter the Safin and Nijat of the 12th Imam? That bridge is Abu al-Fazl Abbas. You know, if somebody wants to travel from this Safin and Nijat, which is Hussein, and to the Safin and Nijat of the 12th Imam, and that link to understand that is no one but Abu al-Fazl, right? Um, because it is through him we will be able to understand, have that ma'rifat of what Safin and Nijat is and what Safin and Nijat is all about, you know, through the personality of Abul Fazl, right? And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Now, when we look at Imam Hussain alayhi salam and him being Safin and Nijat, and the commonality of these two Safin and Nijat, there are only two Imams who have done Qiyam. You know, we are not, re we are not going to really compare, uh, you know, the life of Imam Hussain and the 12th Imam. However, there's so much of commonality and Alhamdulillah, the scholars have talked and discussed a lot about, about this topic, right? Uh, but we see, for example, in regards to the Qiyam, you know, is the Imam Hussain have done the Qiyam and the 12th Imam will do the Qiyam, you know? Imam Ali alayhi salam was forced to accept the Khilafah. I mean, he never did Qiyam as such, right? He was forced. But Imam Hussein, he did Qiyam, right? And he did Qiyam for what? For reforming, you know, fi ummat jaddi wa abi, right? And this must allow us to reflect that the deterioration, the limitation, and the state of the community of the Muslim Ummah have reached at the time of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and he did Qiyam. Similar analogy we can strike that for the Qiyam of the 12th Imam, the qualities and the state of the Muslim Ummah will be pretty much the same. And then Imam Hussain did Qiyam and after which, you know, the 12th Imam would. Same in regards to the helpers and supporters of, the, of Imam Hussain and the 12th Imam. 
So those who re re want to be in support and help the 12th Imam, their qualities, their understanding and ma'rifat, that's why we said Abul Faz is the bridge, must be like the ma'rifat and qualities of the Ashab of Imam Hussain salam. Somebody who wants to be the supporter of the 12th Imam, that's Safin and Nija, and want to be in that Safin and Nija, you know, they should be very much similar to the supporters of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. So it's a, that's why we say, oh, 313. We say, oh, 313, you know, it's just 313. But we have thousands and thousands, aren't we? You know, millions of, of uh, you know, supporters of Imam Mahdi, we say. But what, only there's no 313, these 313 should be like, you know, as they say that, Ana Majnoonul Hussein. You know, apparently in regards to John, it's been mentioned that whether he was there, he wasn't. But in the case of that, if we be killed 70 times and burnt and brought back to life again, we will sacrifice our life for Imam Hussein alayhi salam, right? So that sort of quality should be in the uh, Ashab of the 12th Imam as well. Now, I would like to share a khutbah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and perhaps link that to that very Safin and Nijat, why Imam Hussain alayhi salam is. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna allaha ma khalaqa khalqallah. O oh people, and this khutbah is before he is leaving Medina, he's, he gives this sermon. So, inna allaha ma khalaqa khalqallah. O oh oh people, ayyuhan nas, why Allah created the creation? So he's directly pointing out to the very important reality, the purpose of creation that we all are after to understand. And creation itself is, is a natural uh, outcome of existence such as God. It is very natural, right? Because good cannot be stopped. Khaliq cannot be stopped. Right? If you stand near an ocean, the waves will come. Nobody will stop the waves. And every wave that comes is a different, you know, texture, color, form, sound, beauty. So Allah is Khaliq and He's always creating. That cannot be stopped. It's natural. Right? And <clears throat> on the contrary, if it's like if a, if 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 there is a doctor or if there is uh, a person who is capable of, I don't know, uh, plumbing or doing something, right, in a masjid or some place, and he does not extend that help, that person would be considered as, you know, not a good person, not a, you know, he has that ability to do so, but he's not doing it, you know. So the same way Allah, he's, has that power, he is the creator, he has all good, and if he doesn't create, that will be a bit, you know, strange, right? So here, in Allah ma khalaqa, uh, khalaqa Allah, why Allah created the creation? Illa liyarifuhu. The purpose of creation is knowing, is marifat, is understanding. That's why naturally our fitra wants to know. Just even the small little children, if you look at it, if you kind of joke with them and hide something like this, you know, they really want to know, right? You know, this is something in there. It's in the nature of man, you know, in the nature of children. It's in the fitrat of ours that we want to know, right? So the purpose of the whole, this creation is layarif, so that, that people, that creation have the marifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah is hidden and always be, will be hidden, so this journey of knowing Him will be an eternal journey. You know, it's, we will be always in this journey of knowing whether we live or we die, whether we be in Barzakh or in hereafter. Right? And arafu, when you know Him, when you recognize Him, is Marifat, right? And which kind of, if we put the hadith of the sixth Imam where it says, you know, Ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa You know, I have created, you know, jinn and men in order that they worship me. 
the criteria of worship for it to be called worship is marifat. You know, being a polytheist, for example, and going to the temple and praying is also worship, as in, you know, in the conventional sense. But is that really a worship? Not, because there is no marifat there. It may have the shikl, the form of worship, but if it does not have the marifat, and even leave aside polytheists, praying, you know, wailun lil musalleen, wow unto those who pray salat, the Quran says, right? Uman salatim sa'oon, you know? So it just may have that form, but if a person who is praying and have the marifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will not say wow unto it. So the criteria of worship to be called worship illa liyabudun is marifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know and there is nothing other than that idha arafu abadu and what will happen after that wastaghnu bi ibadatihi an ibadati ma siwa the person when he has that marifat and naturally the reaction of this marifat, when the sun will rise, the day will come. It's natural. Once a person have that marifat, abadu, there's nothing but ibadat that person will do. What is what does marifat will bring about? The marifat will bring about Ya Yu Nas Antumul Fukara Allah. You know, we are faqir. You know, the same way as number three is odd, nothing but odd. This is, our faqr is our essential reality. Faqr, we have faqr existential faqr. We, you know, we have faqr wujudi. It's very natural. That's why it says, in a dua kumail we recite, you know, silahul buka. What is buka? Buka is nothing but manifestation of our faqr. When a person cries, when a baby cries, because it's showing that faqr, it needs something. As soon as a child is born, if it doesn't cry, it's pronounced dead. dead. If it cries, it's it's alive. So the birth of a human being, of an insan is crying, is dua, is buka. And the death of a human being is najwa. So it's from dua to munajat. While he's dying, he's whispering. So all his life is that. So that the, the essential reality of ours, when we recognize that Allah, that's what marifat is. Knowing that Allah is everything and I'm nothing. Ida arafu, when I know that, when I have that marifat of Allah, that He's everything and I'm nothing, right? What will I do? I'll do ibadat. Abadu. There will be nothing other than that. And then this ibadat will bring about what? It will make me self sufficient. An ibadat masiva. I will not worship nothing but Him. Because man naturally worships. The same way as man naturally wants to know. He worship, either he will worship, you know, that's why it also comes in common terms as well, you know. I'm religiously going to the gym. That word of being religiously going, you know, it's like worshipping, you know. I, people worship celebrities, for example, when they follow too much, right? So this worship is also in our fitrat, is also in our nature. Either we will worship, you know, the dunya or, you know, things that we go after, right? Or we'll worship Allah. So if there is marifat, is ibadat, and if there is that ibadat, then we will be self-sufficient. We'll be, you know, ghani, right? Be ibadat masiva. We will not worship no one else but Him. Faqala rajul. Yabna Rasulullah, ma marifatullah azza wa jal. Oh, you know, son of the Prophet, what is really marifat of Allah? He mentioned it, now there is a person who is asking more. You know, what is really marifat of Allah? You know, can you really explain me in, in detail? Then he, said, then he says, فَقَالَ مَعْرِفَةُ أَهْلِ كُلِّ زَمَانٍ imami. The marifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually the marifat of the imam of the time. Safin al Nijat, Imam Hussein, and to the Safin al Nijat of our 12th imam. So if we have the marifat of the imam of the time, you know, a person who dies without 
knowing the Imam of the time, he died the death of Jahiliya. He doesn't know Allah. So that connection is there too, right? So the ma'rifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually the ma'rifat of that wilayat. Is actually the ma'rifat of what imamat is. Right? Because we will unable to comprehend and have the understanding of you know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will not understand. You know, subhanallah ya mayusifun, as the Quran itself says. Glory you know, be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will not, we will not be able to depict, have any understanding, illa, except, you know, there's always this illa, ibad al mukhlasin those who are mukhlas, those who are purified ones, they will be able to teach us, you know, and provide us with the understanding and ma'rifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in this hadith, what is being introduced is that Tawheed. And that's what Imam Hussain alayhi salam sacrificed his life for. And Tawheed is the Safina Nijat. Now, when we look at, for example, Ma'rifat of the Imam, it means that who is an Imam? What is his position? What is his reality? What is his, you know, existential reality of the Imam? Because if we understand his existential reality, then we'll be able to understand and have the ma'rifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's linked. It's very important. And peculiarly, when it comes to, you know, us, the school of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, there are certain mystical, esoteric phenomena that, that is connected to our belief system. And these phenomena, the understanding of these esoteric realities is a must. And as a matter of fact, every religion have mysterious and esoteric side to it. Whether that be Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, you know, Christianity, Judaism, they do have. And the beauty of Shi, you know, Islam is that you find amazing esoteric principles. For example, as it's, we are, you know, it's a Safina Nijat as we are celebrating the birth of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. On the third of Shaban, there is a dua from the eleventh Imam. Now, eleventh Imam is the last Imam in the sense that people going to meet, speak, and see. Then there is minor occultation and major occultation. So now the 11th Imam is responsible of transferring all that is required or that is in the Safine Nijat to the, to the followers who is going to be waiting till this another Safine Nijat to arrive. And that's why Aqad Bahajat, he says that perhaps the most uh, stressful or the most difficult time among all of the Imams, that's his, that's his analogy. You know, he says is maybe is the 11th Imam. Because he has to make sure that whatever he has gathered, he has to transfer it to the, to the community. It's a big responsibility. Because there's, the 12th one is major occultation. Now the community needs to survive after the 11th Imam, you know, is Shaheed. And while the 12th Imam is in the... So the, the transformation of whether those be outward, fiqhi, sort of rulings, teachings, and those inner esoteric haqqaiq realities. And Imam did that. Lawlaq. لَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْأَفْلَاقِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَوْ لَا فَاتِمَا لَمَا خَلَقْتُ كُمَا You know, that's a long hadith, right? If it wasn't for Fatima, Ali and Prophet wouldn't have been created. I'm not going to get into that hadith, right? Now, what is pointing out to the reality of who Fatima is, right? 
وما ادراك ما ليلة القدر وما ادراك ما فاتمة. You know, sixth Imam says Fatima is the night of Qadr. If night is Fatima, the Qadr is Ali. Now, the destiny that descends. That's why he's the Qasimun Nar wal Jannah, right? He, he destines people. That's Ali. That descends on who? On Fatima, which is the night. Eleventh Imam also just quickly came to my mind, says that the journey to Allah is incomplete without night being the vehicle. Night is Fatima. <laughs> Without Fatima, the journey to Allah is incomplete. Why? Why? Because the, she is the, you know, the reality of all creation to exist. Laula Fatima, lema khalaqtukuma, lema khalaqtukuma. Nahnu hujjaj Allah ala khalqi. Levant Imam. Jaddatana, our jadda, Fatima is our, is our hujjat. Hujjat of what? Hujjat of the Imams, of Imamat, even Imam Ali included here. So the Baqa of Risalat is Fatima, mentioned by the Prophet, and the first Masum. And you have the eleventh Imam. He has to transfer that, right? To that esoteric, you know, side of Deen. And here as well, the Baqa of Imamat is Fatima. Risalat is Fatima, Imamat is Fatima as well. Imam is, you know, transferring that. And it remained with us. The asrar and the secrets of Fatima, who she is. We have that in our Hadith literature more than other schools of thought. And perhaps maybe some of the, you know, Sufi masters may have their, such as Ibn Arabi mentions in one of the Risala that Jibreel would attend to Fatima after the demise of the Prophet, after the Shahadat of the Prophet. Jibreel comes to Fatima. Now, that itself is very astonishing where Imam Khomeini says that I have looked at all of these qualities, but I can't seem to comprehend this, that Jibreel coming to Fatima. Because Jibreel is an archangel. Even he did not come for Ulul Azim Prophet. <laughs> Fatima is able to see. Ulul Azim Prophet is unable to see. <laughs> Jibreel is coming. This whole Hadith Kisa is what? She is watching. Jibrail goes to Allah as this come. He says, this is Fatima is seeing all of that. Listening Jibrail comes and to speak to Rasulullah. Who listens? Who have that capability? That sort of nafs is needed to see. <laughs> That's Fatima. Imam Hassan Askari, third of Shaban. Right. And very quickly, the Mumin, Alamat of Mumin are five. One of them, what did he say? Ziyarat Arbain, community building. He has to transfer it. Look where it has reached now. At a time where this Imam is in Samera, didn't even do Hajj. <laughs> right? Prison. He's talking about Ziyarat Arbain. Saying, go do Ziyarat Arbain. So much of persecution, Mutawakkil and all that period, he passed. That period has gone as well. He knows, but he's still mentioning and transferring that. It's important because Safin and Nijat is Hussein. Hussein is going to give that Tawheed, that Marifat of that Tawheed. And Marifat of, of Allah is the Marifat of the Imam. Who's an Imam? On the third of Shaban, there's a dua from 11th Imam. This is from Imam Hassan Askari. That, you know, Allahumma, where he says that, uh, you know, for the day of the Mawlud. What Mawlud? The Mawlud, when he was born, the whatsoever in the heaven cried. Whatsoever was on the earth cried. Why? Because his martyrdom was already announced. Not born yet. Just born. But his martyrdom is already announced. What concept is this? It's very mysterious. It's not, it cannot be you know, understood or digested by you know, even our Ahle Sunnah brothers, because they will say, what is this? Right? But this is mystery. And Imam Hassan Askari is mentioning this. And his dua is in Mafati. You know. This points out to the maqam, the station, the position of Ahle Bayt Salam, something which is beyond what we may see and comprehend as 
Yes, ana basharun mislukum yuha alayhi. Yeah, bashar. But they are something else. They are the creation of that light. And Allah chose them in that realm. That's why Ziyarat of Fatima Zahra, we tested you and you passed. Him. And when the, Allah chose them based on certain qualities, they were. That's why the fifth Imam says there's no favoritism between us and Allah. We, are, we, we receive and we have achieved because of our itaat. And there's no favoritism between us and our Shias. They will come close to us because of their itaat. There's no favoritism. In that realm of nur, in that realm of light, Allah chose them and sent them here on this earth. When Allah sent them here on this earth, they were thankful of being chosen. And they tried their utmost, they tried their level best to be thankful. And that sajda of Hussein on the day of Ashura is thanking Allah. That Allah, you chose me. I hope I have done it. Fustabi Rabbil Kaaba. I hope I have finished. Will you go to an expert to teach your child art? Or you will choose anybody? You want your children to be taught by an expert teacher. So you'll go and find an expert. Ahl Bayt are the expert teachers Allah chose. And Allah wants the children to be taught by them. And these teachers, they do their level best. That's how they Allah have chosen them. Right? So they have, they are khilqat nuri They have that creation of light, which is even before third Imam, is, the 11th Imam is saying, before he was born, his shahada was already announced. Right? And this, is very interesting as it goes on and it looks at that in the end an angel who was Fatrus punished and he was cured by the cradle of Hussein. Is Imam Hassan Askari saying, huh? Angel punished? Do, do they commit sin? Angels are pure beings. Do they commit sin? It is the lack of our understanding. Anyway, you know, that's a theological dis discussion in regards to angels. In Christian theology, yes, you know, Satan is a fallen angel. They call Shaitan as fallen angel, right? And also that's why you have, you know, Los Angeles, you know. Brother Hadi, welcome from America, you know. Thank you for that. Where are you in Los Angeles, Brother Hadi? Oh, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Sorry. Oh, salam. Yeah, yeah, happy to see you, Sayyid. Alhamdulillah, you know. Welcome back. So, angels are lost angels. Satan is a lost angel. So, in Christian theology, angels are, they are possible of committing sins. The story of Suleiman and the angels, you know, once again, there is also, there's that discussion is there. Apparently, Sheikh Tusi also, I was more inclined towards believing that the angels can commit sins now my take here would be that it's not the question of sin. What is a sin? Yeah, angels are pure being. However, in terms of their calculations, they may fall short. They may lack. Two angels were sent to do azab. Both of them came and one said to the other, Baba, in, this man is in this village. This person is such a pious man, worshipping and praying. Allah wants this person to be killed as well? No, no, it's not possible, the angel says. The other said, no, Allah said we have to do it. No, it doesn't make sense. Let's go back and ask him. Two angels, pure being, difference of opinion. So there's a lack of certain understanding in the aql. Because if we say angels are pure being, which means that Angels are nothing but aql. Symbolized as angel. Aql is angel, are angels. Let's take it that way. Aql, because aql is pure. Aql will never commit a sin. Our aql will never commit a sin. It's pure. You know, it's like if you have a coin, you know, there's heads and tails. The, the tail side 
is actually the aql. And the head side is ruh. The watered down version of that ruh itself is nothing but aql. It's one reality. Aql wa ruh, one reality. But there's qalb as well. There's qalb as well, the heart. That's why waqana qabi qawsayn aw adna. Jibrail comes, which is aql rasul, which is an angel. Jibrail comes with the Prophet and he says, I can't go any further. What went further? Not the aql. Jibrail stopped there. Is the qalb rasul went further? Is the heart of the Prophet? Or sometimes the heart is also synonym of nafs. Ya yatul nafs al mutmainna. Or qalb salim, for example. Right? So aql are angels, pure, masoom, because aql is masoom. The reason why we commit errors or mistake is because our aql is overpowered by our nafs, by our desires. So we, we make mistakes. Seventh Imam says, Allah have two hujjat, one in you, one outside. One in you is what? Is aql. And one outside is the Anbiya. Now, if this aql which is inside is weak or weakened, then you have the hujjat outside, which this aql will synchronize it with that hujjat and try to protect. So now Fatrus is not a sin. He cannot fly. Flying is what? You know, flying is going higher in terms of having ma'rifat of Allah. That's what flying is. Now he cannot fly. Perhaps he is unable to unlock some of the higher realities of Tawheed. And he needs to be given that opportunity that he could fly. Fatrus in dua Imam Hassan Askari as he needs to go higher, he's, what does he do? He approaches Jibreel, which is the Aqlikul. <laughs> he's the Abul Aql, Abul and um, Angels, he's Archangel. So as a lower level of Aql approaches the leader, which is Jibreel. And says, Where are you going? I'm going to Medina. Why? Because you know. Hussein born and I'm going to go give congratulations to the Prophet all these angels going with you yes everybody coming Fatru says please take me you know I need to be cured so he was brought by Jibreel Imam Hassan Askari is saying that this Fatrus, not the, this, this, this story is in support of that dua where what is, the, what is the translation of that dua? The Fatrus who was cured by the cradle of Hussein. So Fatrus was brought. It's not the question of sin here. It's a question of unlocking higher reality. Which Fatrus wants to. And as he was brought. What did he do? He just wiped his wing to the cradle of Hussein. And he was cured. That is Imam. That is Hussein. That is Safine Nijat. <laughs> Imam Bakr, Imam Sadiq doing tawaf. Imam Sadiq is young. Father also doing tawaf. A person comes to Imam Bakr and asks something. Imam Bakr says, after tawaf, come to Maqam Ibrahim. After that, I will answer your question. Finish the Salat behind Maqam Ibrahim. This person approaches again. I think Ghaj Jawadi in Share Ziyarat Jame Kabira brings this as in Madanul, uh, what do you call, Wakhuzanul Ilm. They are the treasures of knowledge. The Ahl Bayt. Who are they? They are the treasures of knowledge. The, this person comes and he asks a question, and Imam answers. After this person leaves, Imam Bakr says to Imam Sadiq, who is young, he said, you know who was this? This was Jibreel. He came to ask a question. He came to gain the knowledge. Why not be the case? How far did the Jibreel go? <laughs> he didn't go any further. Who went further? Rasulullah 
اولونا محمد او ستونا محمد کلونا محمد Why not Jibreel come and ask the Imam about the secrets of Tawheed? Right? So these are Masumin. These are the Imams. Without them, Tawheed is unlocked. Cannot be unlocked. وَأَرْكَانَ لِتَوْهِيدِكَ Ziyarat al-Jamiya. They have the Rukun of Tawheed. Without Rukun, it's void. So, Safine Nijat is that Safine Nijat that Haqiqat in reality is that Tawheed which Hussein is providing. Bika araftuka wa anta dalal dali alay. Oh Allah, I know you because you showed yourself to me. I don't need qualities or this or sun or moon or what not to come to you. You showed yourself. That's a pure Tawheed. Seeing Allah. Right? That's what Imam Hussein transferred. Protected from Rasulullah Hussain, Umin Iman Amin Hussain. That Tawheed which Rasul brought was protected by Imam Hussain. That's why he said in Nijat. And then finally, I'm ending, I have taken too much of your time. We have to also look at the bridge, Abu al-Fazl. Huh? Yes. You go to Imam Hussain, no. You go to Abu al-Fazl first. And then you go to Imam Hussain. أنا مدينة الإيل وعليون بابها. If Safine Nijat is Hussein, the door to Safine Nijat is Abbas. If Hussein is Tawheed, if Hussein is knowledge, if Hussein is مدينة الإيل, the door to that is Abbas. بابا يا كاشف الكرب أن وجه الحسين اكشف كربي بحق حقيقة الحسين. Who are we addressing to? Who is Kashif al-Karb? Allah is Kashif al-Karb. But in this zikr, who are we addressing to? Kashif al-Karb as to Abbas. And Karb of who? Not you and I. Karb of Hussein. We are talking about here. <laughs> there are different levels of calamity. There's a calamity of me and you. You know, I lost my pen or phone or, you know, my food, my lunch. I'll be like, <laughs> you know, where's my lunch? <laughs> this Calamity. But that is Hussein's calamity is what? Ya Kashif ul Karb. An wajhu. An wajil Hussein. Who is that? Is Abbas. So he's, you have an Imam. He is in turmoil. He is looking towards Abbas. He is the Kashif ul Karb. Why? We recite in Ziyarat. Muti ulilla ul Rasuli. Ita'at. What is ita'at? Qurbun nawafil. You come close to me so much with your ita'at, I become your hand. I become your eyes. That is Abbas. With his ita'at. With his taslim. To who? To the Imam. Who is Imam Hussein? <laughs> See how these things are all beautifully connected to each other. It's not the question of, oh, then Imam Hussein level is Nauzubillah low, Abbas level. No, it's not that. Who taught Dua'i Kumail to Ali? It's Khizr. <laughs> Who brings Quran to Rasulullah? Jibreel. So Jibreel is higher than Rasul? <laughs> no. Every creation and everything created has its own sort of duty, responsibility, and beauty. Ya Kashi Vulkar is Abbas. Because he is that. That is why Sayyid Ali Qazi says, Tawheed if you want, Imam Hussein. But want to go to Imam Hussein? It's Abbas. He is the door. That is why, one last saying, the brother is watching me there, inshallah. Kaabe awliya is Abul Fasl. Sayyid Ali Qazi says, the Kaaba, of the awliya. What do we do around Kaab? We go tawaf. Tawaf al-Kaab. Seven times we do tawaf. After doing seven times, what do we do? We fall in sajda. We connect to Allah. The blessing of doing the tawaf is that we have reached to the level of Al to the in the valley of Allah. What is required there after reaching there is nothing but sajda. That's what two rakat prayer becomes wajib. You know, ma'ani ul akhbar You know, there's asrar, the secrets behind you know, the amal that we have is that. 
that you will reach to a level that after reaching that, you have to do sajda. Because you have reached the level of, you know, nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which naturally, automatically, you should fall in sajda. People who are awliya, they naturally do that. Right? But for us, it's like, okay, it's wajib, this, that, and the other. Right? Ayah, ayah Qur'ani, which have ayah wajib, is naturally when a person reads, would see that, and naturally will humiliate, you know, humble oneself by doing sajda. After seven tawaf, is sajda. Kaabe awliya, abul fazl. So the ma'rifat of Allah is not pos possible without doing tawaf of Abbas. And Hussein, also the same, you know. What do we do after ziyarat of Imam Hussein? What does he give us? He gave us the honor to do two rakat ziyarat prayer. <laughs> it connects us to Allah. That's the secret. If you go to Hussein, if you go to Abbas, they connect us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the one. They are the safina in jihad. Inshallah, next week we'll try to look a bit more about, you know, Abu al-Fazl and the 12th Imam as the safina in jihad. Inshallah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والذابين عنه والمستشهدين بين يدي اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج وفي في عمره الشريف ومد في عمره الشريف اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم انصر من نصر الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد جميعا اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا رب على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Sant Sheikh for the beautiful lecture, inshallah, again next week. And